Last year we had 219 people. This year we have 304. Next year I hope we'll have 400. <laughs> the enthusiasm is increasing and we are so encouraged. It's really good. Uh, Minister, Honorable Minister Grace Fu, Minister for Culture, Community and Youth, Dr. Gerard E, Chairman, Charity Council, uh, Dr. Ang Hak Singh, Commissioner of Charities, distinguished guests, speakers and panelists, ladies and gentlemen. You all know that I'm from SIAS. Someone asked me what does SIAS stand for? It used to stand for silly investors always suffer. <laughs> but uh, over the 19 years, we worked very hard to make it stand for smart investors always succeed. So very good, very good morning to all of you and welcome to the 2018 Charity Governance Conference. We are very, very pleased that the Charity Council supporting this event very strongly and has brought, has been responsible for this. And we are happy to organize this. I think the Charity Council deserves an applause. <laughs> we are actually very humbled to be able to organize this year's conference again with the support of the Charities Council as part of our Singapore Corporate Governance Week activities, bringing together companies and charities to update their governance practices. We are now very well known in the region. China, Thai government has engaged SIAS also to do what we are doing for Charity, Charity Council and for Singaporeans. We believe in corporate governance. We really believe in good governance, ethical practices, and we want to help all and sundry, just not corporations, but charities and uh, non-profitable organizations. And, and you know anyone who would like to know, we are happy to work together. We are pleased to extend our platform to share best practices in governance amongst charities today. Governance is one of our pillars for our vision of empowering listed corporations with best practices in corporate governance. At SIS, we practice what we preach, as governance is central to how the organization is run at every level. So with this year's conference theme, Governance for Excellence, we will discuss topics that are at the top of mind of many charities, raising funds and attracting the right people to help further your cause. With social media invading everyone's lives today, the way people give and interact with charities has also evolved. For example, many of you would recall the ice bucket challenge. Do you all know? How many of you know that? Ice bucket challenge? Wow. Okay, all of you know that. A campaign to promote awareness of uh, ALS and encourage donations for research. To recall the campaign briefly, a person is filmed as a bucket of water and ice is dumped over the individual's head. The individual then nominates a minimum of three people to do the same thing, having only a 24-hour time frame to complete the challenge and make a donation to the ALS. And uh, if you don't mind, if some of you have not seen this video for just 40 seconds, bear with me while we play this video for you. It's innovation, it's, you know, unthinkable, but it happened and they raised a lot of money. It went viral in July and August 2014, using social media as a platform to reach a worldwide audience. More than 17 million people posted videos online including Bill Gates and former President George W. Bush. You can see all the celebrities, many, many of them, just some. Over a two-year period, the money raised through the challenge helped fund research and development of treatment drugs. So the Ice Bucket Challenge raised about, I think, 115 million for ALS Association. So you can think of innovative ideas, and see how you can get Singaporeans to give you $100 million. 
all right? So, <clears throat> a chart from the ALS Association website, if you look at their website, it shows 77 million or 67 percent of the funds were designated to research, and another 23 million, about 20 percent, were given to patient and community services. So, US 10 million or 9% was used for public or professional education and they even disclosed that 3 million was used for fundraising and another 2 million in external processing fees. Now this is transparency, I would say, at its best. It is not only this detailed disclosure of the monies raised, the ALS website also provides detailed accounts for the programs and research initiatives undertaken by ALS Association. And this is a good example for many of, especially the small charities, to, to think very hard how you can come up with ideas to raise money and then disclose what you do with it. Don't feel shy to tell people exactly what you did with the money because the more we know, the public knows about your manner of expenditure details, they will be happy to come again and give you more money. So the level of transparency and accountability goes a long way to the development of trust in the charity. All right, if you ask me a question, what does good look like? This example of the ALS Association would certainly be an excellent example which we all can learn to emulate. I'm also encouraged by the recent launch of MCCY's Safer Giving campaign. A survey conducted by the Commissioner of Charities in 2017 highlighted that whilst most Singaporeans engage in charitable giving, with more than 80% of respondents having donated in the preceding 12 months, only 6% would ask questions or contact the charity, nonprofit, organization, or fundraiser to find out more about the cause. Therefore, I reiterate my call to all donors and stakeholders to seek accountability of the monies raised by a charity. Always remember to ask, check before you give. In this way, we all are helping the charity's ecosystem to thrive, improve, and charities must be transparent, fully transparent, and accountable to donors for the monies raised. Today, we have organized a couple of panels of experts with a total of almost 20 speakers and panelists to share their expertise and help you improve your governance. I'm sure you will make full use of this opportunity to ask them questions and make them work for their lunch later. Thank you and enjoy the conference.